what is going on people tunji again from Caesar graphics welcome to my channel if you're new here don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you will be notified when i post my tutorials all right so i want to welcome you to my how to do background series and today we are going to be working on the project from start to finish so uh without any further ado let's jump into today's lesson This is the project brief. So the description says we are starting a new series called Busy Street. Uh, this is for market people, mostly people with shops in the busy area. The idea is to teach how they can grow their business regardless of their environment. So then the target audience are market people, both young and old. The project type, designed for a TV show, we want a design we can use on Instagram so for the color it says use any color then the design brief these are the information that we are going to be putting on the project so um, let's start so we're starting it with um, a new document so I'm gonna click on file and I'll select new and um, for this project um, we are going to use um, something around 800 by 800 since this is going to be on Instagram, so our um, resolution should be 120. And I'll call this use. Alright, you can give your project any name you feel like. Okay, so um we are going to bring in our background for this project. Okay, so I'm gonna drag this and drop like so. Okay, so as you can see, um so this is the background we're using, and um the background is looking too busy, alright. Uh and this is one of the reasons why I decided to do this um, training for you guys because if I try to put the text, uh, let's say I have the title, alright, it's not really visible. If I ever make it white, I like the color of this text. So I'm just going to save it by clicking here and I'm going to copy it. And then let's say to change it to white now. See, white is still not looking visible. Let's see if we use red. Um, red is um, a little bit visible, but if we start adding the other information, like the rider, then you know, we can use the same color with the title for the rider. It won't look nice. So if I put this here and I make this white, you see, I can't really see the rider because of the background. Okay? And one of the reasons why we were able to see the title is because the text is bold. If you have a bold text and you place it on a busy background, it will still be visible. When you start putting text with um, small sizes, it won't be visible. Alright, so as you can see now, I can hardly see what I have here. So we need to find a way to create a space for our information because when you have a busy background like that, you need to find a way to create space for your information. So I know this space here is big enough for me to put my information. So what we're going to do is I'm going to crop out these people, change the color, make this more darker so as to be able to, you know, put my text there. There are several ways you can work on the background to make your information come out visible, okay? So so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom in, all right? And um, for the sake of time, I'm going to um, fast forward the video, all right? But before I do that, what I'm trying to do is I want to crop out these people from the background so as to still have that, you know, people working and then we're still going to have this visible, but it won't be this, uh, it won't be visible like the way we have it now. So I'm going to start. I'm done copying the part I want to make visible on the background. I'm going to hit Ctrl Enter to create a macro selection of that um, crop part. And I'm going to select the curve adjustment. If I push this down, I need to move this so you guys can see what I'm doing. So if I push this down, you see it's affecting my selected part. And that is not where I want the curve adjustment to affect. On the vector max uh, box here, I'm just going to hit Control I for window users and Command I for Mac users. I've invited the selected um, parts now to where I want to 
um, put my information. So if I go back to the cover I just met now, I still want to be able to see the information on my background. Uh -huh. I think I'm okay with this. All right. So um, if I put my text on this now, you see that I can see my information. Everything I put on it now is very visible. All right. So and I st can still see the information on my background. So I'm going to continue with the design. So I'm just going to double click on this. Um, I even want to teach you guys how to put information on busy background so as to not to kill the background and then make your information come out visible. I'm just going to put this there. Like so and I think I need to make this cut. So I'm just gonna come here and click on the cut button. So I'm just slow this down. Okay, so I'm just gonna push on this here. So I'm just gonna press it. Like so and yeah. So okay, one of the reasons why I always like to use this color on background like this is because you always stand out, especially when you are working on the design with a dark background. It's not always professional to use a darker color so as to make your text more visible. So I'm just going to um, scale this more, scale this down just a little bit. Okay, So the font I'm using here is called the Vertical Mail. It's a very popular font and easy to get it online, so just search for it. Aside from making the title bigger, I always have something else I make bigger again. So as to create hierarchy, alright? So after saying the title, the next thing that will call your attention is the sign. So I'm just going to position this here. Uh, the logo, I have it here and I'm going to position it somewhere. Here, let's turn this here. All right. Uh, you know what? I'm I'm trying to see if I can add something that shows business growth to this. So I'm gonna scale this down. Going to create a new layer. So I'm gonna draw it. Here. I'm gonna put my grid here because I want everything to be aligned. So I'm gonna make a copy of this now. I'll drag and drop here to make a copy of it. So as you can see, we have two copies of this now. And I'm gonna hit Ctrl T on my keyboard for Windows users and Command T for Mac users. So if I hit Ctrl T now, I have this. And how I'm going to rotate this is I'm gonna move my mouse away from that um, selection. When my mouse is out of the stroke, now you see that I have my mouse cursor changes to this rotation icon. If I go back now, you see the way it is, and if I go out, you see I have that icon telling me that am I planning to repeat this? And I'll say yes by holding on shift and I'll drag to rotate. Then I'm going to position this somewhere here, like so. All right, so I'm going to hit the command T again and I'm going to push this back. Let's this here. Yeah, now, if you can't find your um, ruler, simply go to view and then select the um, ruler option here or you can um, hit Ctrl R or Command R to bring out the ruler for you. So I'm just going to select this now. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make this line and I'll match the two layers so which is this and this. So if I hit Ctrl E now, you see I've matched it, so they are not one. They are not one layer. So I was able to do it with Ctrl E. All right. So I'm going to uh, make a new layer now. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to select the pen tool, and I'm going to just click to make my first point, and I'm going to click here to make my second point. But I want this to go out of the title of the artwork like so. All right, just to um, show both. So then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the layer. I'm just going to call it. Then I'm going to select my brush tool. Now there's something I want to teach you guys how to do here, right? So I want to apply color to this stroke. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scale my brush size down to about this point. Now I'm using the size of my circle here to know this the width of my stroke when I apply it to this part right here. So I'm just going to scale this down, all right? I'm sure you'll get this by the time I apply it, okay? So I'm just going to scale this down to about this point. Now, I'm sure some of you may not see this circle on your system. If you don't, make sure your cap lock is turned off. 
as you can see now my cap lock is turned on that's why i'm seeing this cross sign all right so if i turn it up now you see i have to look up my brush the way it's supposed to be so i'm just going to select the pen tool now and i'm going to right click and select stroke pad now if this is the first time you're using this option your tool is going to be on pencil uh, so change this back to brush and then hit ok now the reason why we were able to have that white stroke on that part is because my foreground color is set to white so don't forget to do that make sure this is set to white and i'll hit enter to take out the part that i drew and the next thing i'm going to do now is i'm going to create a new layer and i'm just going to use my brush tool myself this time to draw the mouth of my arrow like so and i'm just going to draw this here like so excuse me so now this is nice all right so i noticed that the arrow is um overlapping on my text so which i don't want so what i'm going to do is i'm going to trim this the text from the arrow so uh we need to i'm going to call this growth because i'm going to match the layer so let's match the layer i'm going to shift select the two layers and hit ctrl e on my keyboard to match the layers so i'm going to hold on ctrl and click on the title to create the marquee selection around it and i'll go to select modify and then select expand so my expand should be six like the way i have it here and i'm select okay now as you can see now that my there's a space between my macro selection and the title now all right so i'm just going to go to the um growth layer now i'll hold on alt and hit the add vector max box here to pop up that shape from the arrow so if i hit the control h to hide my grid now you see i have this all right so i'm going to save this and make this um, the first option i'm going to put everything in a book so i'm just going to select the title and then she select the other information and hit control g or command g on my keyboard i'm going to delete this now as you can see this is my first option so i'm just going to call this and um let's go straight to the second option so i'm going to make a copy of this like so all right and um i'm going to call this option two all right so i'm going to hide this layer and i'll make this visible okay so my second option i need to hide this i need to hide this all right and um i don't think i need this growth icon all right i don't think i need it so i'm just going to deliver it here Okay, so if I draw a shape here like so, all right, and I'm gonna make this bold also. Uh, bold, yes. Let me have a separate uh, and put a line to separate them. I'm gonna put a line to separate them. So like this, and I'll turn this to black. Yeah, I think I like it this way. So if I should select the three layers now and make everything align, like so. so I'm going to scale this. this down. So I'm just going to scale this a little bit. Alright, I think I like it this way. Alright, is there anything I'm missing? I don't think so. Alright, so. Um, for the rider, I'm gonna position that somewhere here. I think this guy, oops, excuse me, it's gonna go online. You see? So I'm just going to select this now. Everything needs to be well aligned, alright? So I'm just gonna push this up. to close the space between this just a little bit all right okay so this is nice all right so um this is going to be our second option so the third option let's just see what the third option is going to look like so i'm just going to um let's say hide this one 
and I'll call this third option. Okay, now for this one, I think I can push this down to about here. All right, so for the third option, so what I want to do is I want this um, this selected area to overlap on the title. So I'm just going to scale this big with Control T uh, for the transform adjustments. I'm going to position this here now. Instead of just copying the background again, so what we're going to do is to just click and drag with Alt selected, and I'll release my hand from my mouse to duplicate that vector mask. And um, for this one, I'm just going to put this somewhere here and make this white. All right. So since this is not in any shape anymore, so what we need to do is to scale this a little bit bigger. I'll draw my quick selection like this. I'm going to select the vector mask of the title and uh, I'm going to just fill it with black. All right, so I already have uh, black as my background and I'll add black to the vector mask to take out that part from the letter T. And I have this. All right, like so. So if I hit Ctrl H now, now you see that everything is looking balanced. Okay, so guys, this is where we're going to stop. And um, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you have not subscribed, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So as to be notified when I post my tutorials. Watch out for my next How to Use Background series next week. Thank you guys for your time. Peace.